Hello and welcome to the Villa Park podcast. It's me, Rich, and I am here with your instant match reaction to Chelsea nil, Aston Villa one, and well, 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 well. If you talk about learning from previous mistakes, this was the game where we well and truly did it. Ollie Watkins with his goal, with the winning goal, taking his only chance of the game. Villa and um, playing a disciplined line. Um, Playing that high line, but being really disciplined with it, not letting Chelsea get too much behind us and the midfield pressing and being solid and putting themselves about. If these were the things that we were asking for last week, um, throughout the whole of last week in terms of our reactions, then we certainly gave it in spades. So fantastic, fantastic performance from everyone on the pitch. 1-0 wins away from home are the perfect, perfect victories um, because it shows that you can score your one good chance albeit we had more, which I will go into, um, and you keep a shutout at the other end. And we managed to do that pretty comfortably, I would say. Um, Guys, I'm going to do this more often, instant match reaction. So do please make sure you're tuning in and hitting that like button. If there's not a day where you can't hit the like button today, then there never will be. And hit that subscribe button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We're on over 2,400 subscribers on the road to 3k so please help us get there by liking and subscribing and commenting below on your reaction to the game who played well man of the matches what you thought about Watkins what Emery learned from the previous game so let's get into it obviously starting lineup um I put mine up there um uh, this is what I would have gone for Alex Moreno there wasn't in the side um but Pau Torres came back in and Luca Dean was in there and I believe Max got it spot on um so Emmy Martinez Matty Cash Ezri Conta Pau Torres and Luca Dean across the back McGinn Louise Kamara and then Diaby Watkins and Zaniolo and uh, I thought first half we were pretty solid we kept them quiet um <clears throat> we kind of sussed them out and both teams were kind of sussing each other out at the start there wasn't really too much going on Caicedo had an early shot that went straight at at Martinez but other than that I don't think they had too much um you know Dina was was managing um Sterling pretty well Mudrick um Cash was managing pretty well I think he had one run at him and put a threatening ball across the box but apart from that there wasn't too much there um and then for Villa uh, we grew into the game as it went on, started to have more possession, had a cracking shot from Luca Dean that was well, well saved by uh, Robert Sanchez. And uh, and then as we as the game went on, we kind of grew into it more and more. Zaniolo had a phenomenal shot that was a great save from Sanchez. And that, that was really the standout moment, to be fair, in that first half. And we maybe could have gone in 1-0 up. Um, but yeah, it was it was a fairly solid first half and, and something that Villa fans have been asking for um, quite a lot, you know, in terms of not conceding an early goal and not giving us an uphill battle to get back into the game. Um, and then second half started. Um, both teams had a couple of chances. I thought Chelsea looked fairly threatening um, when they, when, you know, after the restart. And I did think. You know, we've had this so many times where you're thinking, how 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 do you come out so sluggish in the second half? But you know, we 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 turned it around and we started having some more play, settled the team down. You know, and I, I, we were talking about leaders and people to kind of put their foot on the ball. And I thought I thought Martinez did that really well. I thought Louise did that really well. I thought Kamara did that really well. He was he was excellent today. And I thought Conza did that really well and just settled us down, made sure that that Chelsea didn't have anything really in behind us, anything really to to really threaten us. And then the key moment came in the 57th minute uh, where Gusto um, flung himself into a challenge on Luca Dean. Um, kind of won the ball, but was a dangerous tackle. No need for it, really. Um, referee gave a yellow, but VAR took a look at it. It was above the ankle, um, potential leg breaker. And um, and yeah, he, uh, he had to see his marching orders and was, was sent off the pitch. So at that moment, you're thinking more than half an hour to go, you know, previous Villa sides may have panicked. We've had this situation before where we've um, where we've played against 10 men and not been able to break them down. And, you know, Chelsea did raise, them, raise themselves and they made a couple of good substitutions. Cole Palmer came on um, and De Sassi, I thought, was, was excellent all game. He, he moved out to that right-hand side and they started to play well. And Chilwell was obviously dangerous down that left-hand side, but we were always a threat on the break. And I think it might have been from a Chelsea corner or Chelsea attack. 
and ball comes out uh, was cleared. Diaby um, runs on, and Thiago Silva can't get a tackle in on him, can't get a foul on him, lays it into Ollie Watkins, who takes a touch, um, and we're all thinking, please, Ollie, please, Ollie, please, Ollie, has a shot. Um, he gets blocked by Colwell, but goes back into his path, and he just thinks, ah, sod it, I'm going to whack it through the keeper's legs, in off the post, and cue pandemonium in that away end, celebrations, and Ollie Watkins does that finger to the ear celebration as well. All the critics, us included, can be quiet. Now, go on that goal-scoring run, mate, and that is what we wanted, you know, he didn't have many touches of the ball in the game, but he came up and he he, he, he performed in the key moment, and that's what wins you the games, and 1-0, um, was how it stayed. 11 minutes of injury time, a couple of Chelsea chances. Um, maybe Villa could have could have um, um, could have made it two 0 Maybe made it more comfortable. A couple of good substitutions. You know, Bailey looking threatening. Tielemans looking fairly threatening as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we saw it out without really too much trouble. I think uh, Martinez made a fantastic save from uh, Ben Chilwell. But other than that, I think it was fairly comfortable. And it's a, it was slightly concerning for Chelsea on that for their sake. I thought they had one or two good players, but you know, the key moments in both boxes, um, they, they haven't got that ruthlessness and that's going to really uh, cause them to struggle. Um, let's have a quick look at the statistics uh, and, the, and the, the kind of um, key moments in the game from a kind of stats point of view. Obviously there, <clears throat> that was the starting lineup. Martinez got a yellow card, his usual yellow card. Dini the same, Luis the same. Uh, Gusto, obviously the red. Jackson got a yellow as well. He's going to miss the next game. Um, in terms of stats, uh, 47% possession for Villa, 53% for Chelsea. Um, slightly higher expected goals for Chelsea, but we had more shots, 15 shots. We scored our big chance. Uh, sorry, no, we missed our big chance, I believe. Uh, that might have gone down to Zaniolo. But, you know, Watkins scored one of his chances that maybe wasn't the particularly high XG. Um, as we got there, 0.09 went through the keeper's legs. Um, one offside, 10 offsides to Chelsea. So that line was really, really um, organised. And um, and yeah, we caught them offside quite a few times. Maybe a sign of an inexperienced side. Um, both similar for accurate passes. And they had 11 corners. I would have liked to have seen us do a little bit more from those corners. But yeah, a really, really professional away performance. Um, I thought maybe McGinn was been a little bit quiet. If I was to be really picky, I think he could have got in the game a little bit more. Diaby was a little bit quiet as well. I thought maybe he could have got in the game a little bit more. Maybe some more threatening runs with with and without. But in terms of that defensive organisation and what we've asked for from Kamara in particular, I thought he was excellent. Louise, again, very good, putting himself about. But for me, my man of the match would be Edri Konza. I thought he was masterful at the back. Um, Marshall and the troops, we've asked for a leader to step up and I thought he was fantastic. But you guys, let me know in the comments who your man of the match was. Um, mine was, like I say, Edri Konza. I thought it was brilliant. But there were some excellent performances out there and it's a great win. Um, <clears throat> I need to check where we are in the table, actually. Um, we are currently in sixth position. So breaking into that top six, um, 12 points from six games, two points per game average, which is what you can ask for. One nil win, clean sheet, um, just phenomenal. Um, that's how I'm going to leave it. Get in, in the comments with who your man of the match was. What you, who impressed you the most? Uh, what you thought about the game? You know, do do we need to be quiet now? And Watkins, is he going to go on a run? Anything you want in the comments. I'll be back with the lads at half nine tonight for the live match reaction show. So get involved in that. Make sure you're tuning in. Um, hit that like, hit that like button, guys. Hit that subscribe button. Um, help us on the road to 3K. We're over 2,400 already. So please, you'll be doing us a phenomenal job if you can like and hit that subscribe button. I am absolutely buzzing though. Um, join us tonight, 9:30 live. And as always, remember, we all follow the villa. Thanks all. Up and running and Villa Club is loud. Yeah.